Hey everyone, finish watching the next episode of Beetleborgs, the son of Frankenbeans. Frankenbeans receives a telegram from his father. He's built a new son and is sending him to Hillhurst to visit. He arrives. He's quite a bit younger than they were expecting. Nucus, meanwhile, has a new plan involving a fake contest ballot box. He needs someone normal looking to deliver it. Les Fortunes gives him an insurance magazine, and Nucus brings to life the businessman on the cover. The man delivers the box to Zoom Comics, and then tries to offer Nano an insurance policy. The contest is for the most popular Beetleborg. The kids, uh, argue over which one of them will win. At Hillhurst, Little Frankie shows off his music and dance skills. Frankenbeans tries to join in on the fun, but bumps everyone over and breaks everything. Later, Little Frankie entertains the monsters with jokes, and as they all laugh, Frankenbean starts to feel jealous and left out. Les Fortunes has drawn a new monster, Piranha Khan. Nucus sends it out to fight the Beetleborgs. Back at Hillhurst, Frankenbean decides to run away. He wanders to a diner and scares everyone away. Police show up with a mob and surround the building. Frankenbean is afraid to leave. The Beetleborgs, meanwhile, experience some difficulty fighting the new monster due to them trying to impress each other for the contest. They eventually forget the contest and work together to defeat it. The kids see a bunch of people around the diner and go to check it out. Frankenbeans is trying to intimidate everyone and it works. He gets back to Hillhurst and has a newfound sense of confidence in himself. The monsters are all impressed by him making it into the local newspaper. Dr. Frankenbeans arrives to pick up little Frankie. Little Frankie shows off a scary face inspired by his big brother's recent rampage. This is a pretty good episode. I like seeing more Frankenbeans' family. Little Frankie doesn't get that big of a part, though, surprisingly. It's a decent focus for Frankenbeans. The plot is conventional, but that works when the point is to be a vehicle for gags. Nucus' plan is uh, pretty weak. He's honestly pretty lucky the kids cared enough about the contest for it to be a distraction at all. The kids of the show are usually fine actors, but their argument comes off more like calm discussion. It's abundantly clear they weren't comfortable arguing, even for pretend. After so long, it's not a very believable plot, either. The insurance guy brings up some curious points. Nucus can apparently bring to life things not drawn by Les Fortunes. If he can do that, what's stopping him from bringing monsters out of the comics? Also, what happened to the insurance guy? Did he go back into the magazine, or is he just going to wander around for eternity offering people insurance policies? The highlight of this episode is definitely Frankenbeans going out in daytime and terrorizing people, though it wasn't his initial intention to scare people. Dr. Frankenbeans pops in for a cameo, and I think this may be his last appearance in the show, definitely second to last if not. Little Frankie was played by Bobby Edner. He made many appearances in the 90s and 2000s in both film, television, commercials, including Spy Kids 3D. He's best known as the dancing kid in Alien Ant Farm's smooth criminal music video. He's a physical trainer now, though occasionally he still does voice work and animation. There's a lot more human extras than usual this time, and unfortunately I couldn't find much about anyone. The insurance guy was apparently named Mr. Average and was played by Dan Rabot but I can't find any information about him. The cook at the diner was played by Michael Prohaska, who has a couple credits on IMDb that don't include Beetleborgs, so I don't even know if it's the same guy or not. The monster, Piranha Khan, was voiced by Robert Axelrod. I actually thought it was, as it growls a few times, and it sounds like Goofish from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> Robert Axelrod is best known as the voice of Lord Zed and Finster, and he's also provided many memorable voices for Digimon and other Saban cartoons. It was surprising to hear him in Beetleborgs after all this time. Good episode. Nucus remains the weakest element, though, unfortunately. The Hillers monsters are so much fun, but sadly the Beetleborgs side of the plots are really lacking. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. See ya. I interest you in a really good term life insurance policy.